What's up, everybody? Welcome to Kind of Funny Games Daily for Friday, February 2nd, 2018. I'm one of your hosts, Greg Miller, alongside at Tim Geddes. Let Tim host. Not a day goes <clears throat> by, Greg. Yeah. The Despacito is not stuck in my head for some huh. reason because of this office. We were singing before. The earlier song from the day was, uh, first off, it was Don't You Cry by Guns N' Roses. Mm -hmm. Then it became sweet child of mine because Andy Ooh, only sang that part the and then somewhere in there just started getting yeah. sung. Yeah. It happens, man. You're black on black on black. How's that? Black feel? on black on black. Yeah. All black earth thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure about this outfit I chose today. I wanted to try to shake it up, see what I could do with what I had. What is it that you don't like? I about just, it? it doesn't, it doesn't look like it's working. This, this, this collar shirt this, and my hoodie. Yeah, but this, it, the only reason it doesn't work is that the, the smiley is a little too graphic. Like graphic tee look, but you look you look like a game developer. Maybe not of a great game, but okay. I can, I'll take that. That would be the kind of game I would put out. Yeah, not yeah. too great games <laughs> with Greg Miller. That's how it is. If you didn't know, ladies and gentlemen, this is kind of funny. Games Daily, each and every weekday, on a variety of platforms, we run you through the nerdy video game news you need to know about. How do you be part of the show? Write into kindoffunny.com slash kfgd. Give me your questions, comments, concerns, things you want to do on the show. Segments, bad PSN names, you name it, we'll take it. Then. We'll do the show live on twitch.tv slash kind of funny games. If you're watching live, you have a special job. You need to go to kind of funny.com slash you're wrong. Tell us what we screw up as we screw it up so we can set the entire record straight for everyone watching later on youtube.com slash kind of funny games or listening on podcast services around the globe. No matter where you support us, thank you very much. Consider going to patreon.com slash kind of funny games if you think we're doing a good job. Housekeeping for you today on kind of funny.com or no. Yeah, well, that works too. Kind of funny.com. YouTube.com slash kind of funny. Uh, the Extra Life documentary is leaving Patreon exclusive access going Ooh, live wait. for everyone at 5 p.m. Pacific time. It is an hour long documentary chronicling Extra Life 2017. We'd love you to go check it out. And then also today we're brought to you by me undies and pro flowers, but I'll tell you about that later. For now, let's begin the show with what is and forever will be the Roper Report. <laughs> Time for some news. Four items on the Roper Report. A baker's dozen. Thank you, Cool Greg. Number one, and this is a crazy one, Kaz Harai is stepping down as CEO of Sony. Uh, Kaz is leaving the position and on April 1st. Kenichiro Yoshida is taking over. Uh, in the prepared... Too many uh, Yoshidas, man. There can only be one. There can only be one. Yeah, I, I hear yeah. it's a very uncommon last name yeah, in Japan. Know. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I'm surprised. What are, what are the I, chances? I thought it was just Shuhei's family. Um, Kaz put out this statement in a press release. I'm very upset that there hasn't been a Ridge Racer this generation. No, shush, that's not know. a statement at all. Ever since my appointment as president and CEO in April 2012, I have stated that my mission is to ensure Sony continues to be a company that provides customers with can do to move them emotionally and inspires and fulfills their curiosity. To this end, I have dedicated myself to transforming the company and enhancing its profitability and am very proud that now in the third and final year of our current mid-range corporate plan, we are expecting to exceed our financial targets. And it excites me to hear more and more people enthuse that Sony is back again. As the company approaches a crucial juncture when we will embark on a new mid-range plan, I consider this to be the ideal time to pass the baton of leadership to new management for the future of Sony and also for myself to embark on a new chapter in my life. There's a lot of words, Kaz, but go get him, buddy. It is, man, and I feel good about this. You know, video games as a whole right now, I, I truly believe they've never been better. With sure. all the loot craze shenanigans and all of the, the microtransactions and all of the games as a service, people having problems with season passes, this and that. Yeah. yeah. Regardless yeah. of that, there's never been this many quality games. Amazing. Uh, so. And there's never been this many games, let alone quality games. Sure. And when you look at N Nintendo and what they're doing with the Switch and how unbelievably successful they've been when you look at sony and the playstation 4 and not only the lineup of, of quality amazing exclusives they have but also the the hardware that they've been pushing and the way that they've been uh that they, they came back from ps3's gen yeah xbox to see them now with this game pass news yep. and with everything they're xbox going One X and, and yeah. how uh consumer focused they are with the <laughs> all of their endeavors whether it's the elite controller or the custom controllers or let's give them the xbox one x to be if you want that type of power all yeah. that type of stuff it's a it's a very pivotal moment for video games and i feel like it's kind of reached a new plateau plateau and i feel like kaz kind of being like hey we're here we're good and moving on to new hopefully fresher, hungrier, younger people. I don't, I don't know. If I don't think Ken's that much younger, younger than him, but, yeah, but I mean, yeah. But like it's somebody that's like, hey, it's it's going to, you understand how this, this game is played, but what's your spin on it? And I think right. that that's important to keep 
things moving. And Kaz is still going to be involved. Right. And they, you know, it's Nick and I talked a little bit on the morning show today because it was it obviously affects Sony Pictures and things like that. And I hadn't really thought in a while about Sony as a whole. We get so caught up, you know, we're games people. We talk about PlayStation and everything else. You figure in this run, Kaz has, you know, used the Be Moved campaign and trying to do all this stuff and to rebound what Sony Televisions had fucked up with that 3D stuff nobody wanted and try to get that. You know what I mean? Like there's been a lot of progress and movement and ideas like you're saying. So to see them saying, you know, that they are profitable here and now it's time to pass it back over to it's like yeah he righted the ship and it's similar to jack trenton right where mm-hmm. jack trenton stuck around as ceo for a long time with playstation then got him on top of the mountain with playstation 4 and like was like all right cool i'm gonna leave here i feel like i've accomplished what i wanted yeah and again it's like it's not that's not bad news it's not like oh like there's their shakeups is this like is he does he not believe in the future to oh, me no. this says he believes more than anything yeah. and it's yeah, like yeah. hey there's a better way to do this for the company to be more profitable there's some quote in there he said um and it excites me to hear more and more people enthused that Sony is back again. Uh, no, but he was talking about like finding other ways to make money, finding other sure. ways to grow the business and stuff. And yeah, like, you know, uh, talking about the, the TVs and shit, like Sony makes amazing TVs. And there was a couple of steps al- along the line uh, when it came to some of the 3D stuff. Although even then, the, the Sony TVs 3D was, was fantastic if you were into that stuff. Uh, but yeah, Sony's in a weird place. I mean, all of these places are a weird place when you look at the movie side, the TV side and all that with Netflix and Hulu and yeah. all of these subscription services with Disney gobbling up everything uh, in sight. You know, the major movie studios, there's not many of them. Yeah. So when there is giant shakeups like that, that changes everything. And I think that, you know, there needs to be somebody overlooking all that. And if Sony Pictures wants to continue, because they've, they've had some issues in the last couple of years, uh, to now look at a world where 20th Century Fox might not exist. Uh, as, as we know it like there's going to be a lot going on and with PlayStation being the success story that it is there needs to be uh, a leadership in in place that continues that but also make sure that the other things are, are not struggling yeah good job Kaz everybody loves you I'm sure you're watching right now go get them mm-hmm. uh, similar in the, in the same vein here of like corporate stuff PlayStation 4 or this is the second item in the rubber board PlayStation 4 sales are down for hardware year over year but software up uh, we're gonna go to GameSpot first before checking in on IGN's take GameSpot reports electronics giant Sony today announced earnings for the period ending December 31st showing slowing PlayStation 4 sales for the quarter Sony shipped 9 million PlayStation 4 units which compares to 9.7 million during the same period last year so uh, they're slowing sure but still juggernaut numbers in October Sony announced there were 67.5 million PlayStation 4 shipped so with the 9 million more added in this earnings report that comes to 76.5 million as of December 31st by comparison the PlayStation 3 sold more than 80 million units worldwide so the PlayStation 4 is closing in on that yikes that's awesome that is insane uh I'm going to look up the information of how much did the Xbox 360 sell? Please overall. do, Tim, as I'll continue. Because that's okay, that's fine. It's slowing down. It's an interesting nugget we need because the question has been like, what is, how long can this last? How long and, can and PlayStation so 4 be run away? An uh, interesting thing I want to clarify here. So, for the period ending December 31st, so we're just looking at year over year slowing from October to December? Yeah, for the quarter. For the cor- for the quarter, okay. So it'd be what? That's the last three months of the year, yeah. October, so so what October, November, at December. There is all right. Uh, we you know I would, I'd be interested to see year over year for when uh, Horizon <laughs> came out and when all the exclusives were hitting. Because sure. you know with Sony lacking its kind of uh, end of the year exclusive push, um, I feel like it, even the previous year they had things like Last Guardian. Right, sure, to sure. Decide. I know that's not like the biggest hey, deal, yeah. but uh, what did they? Am I missing something? What did they have? this year for their the, exclusive thing uh I, they've moved away from that really yeah that's been the thing where they've yeah. let third party shine right so um, i think that's though that's why these numbers kind of to me it, it doesn't surprise me and it being down the little that it is down yeah uh, and still being an amazing couple yeah. months it's just like okay cool that's that shows black friday sales that shows you know the holiday sales and all yeah. that but it also shows yeah there isn't a big exclusive this is the the battlefields and battlefronts and call of duties and assassin's creed's selling the system 100 percent, yeah 
Yeah, I think it's just interesting, right? Because it has been such a runaway success, and every time you see the numbers, it is. But yeah, I mean, being down about a million isn't the worst thing in the world. Uh, IGN, though, chimes in and says, announced in Sony's latest earnings report, the games division as a whole earned $6.5 billion, a 16.2% rise. That led to $778 million in profit, a 50% increase on last year. Software sales ma- or software made up $2.7 billion of that number, making a 71% rise on last year. Hardware sales dropped 9.7 million to 9 million resulting in 2.5 billion dollars in revenue so again it's what you you want to find and what you expect to find the system the console has made it into the hands of the consumer the gamer the people who want it and now that's reaping benefits as they buy software by an insane margin here right yeah 71 percent rise year over the year man what did you find from me here? Uh, so what I found here is is looking at it. So this article saying that you just read is mm-hmm. saying that doing the math on what we know from Sony saying it, you can say that we're looking at 76.5 million yeah. of where PS4 is currently at. They said PS3 sold more than 80 million units worldwide. What I'm seeing on this Wikipedia uh, best-selling game yeah, yeah. console list, uh, looking down in, I don't know the sources on this, but I imagine they're, they're credible based on Wikipedia. W- yeah, us using this in the past. Uh so PlayStation 2 mm-hmm. units sold. It's the highest selling console of all time. Over 155 million. All right. Mm-hmm. Um, going down to the Xbox 360, 84 million. Oh, okay. Here it says PS3 over 83 million. So we don't have any perfect thing there, but you can imagine less than the 360. Yeah. But over 83 million um so yeah ps4 <laughs> closed in on that you'd imagine by next year will eclipse that yeah 100 and if not more i don't think i, I, I not by next year sorry ne- next quarter sure exactly well I, mean, I think yeah next year for sure we'll get over that and that's crazy it's been what a crazy generation this has been a co- <laughs> console life cycle well, if so many people thought this might be the last one here we are putting up giant numbers cats are leaving us when we need them the most <laughs> shuhei save us shuhei so yeah don't worry about the hardware sales being down. Uh, number three, Counter-Strike's co-creator has been arrested. This is via Kotaku. Seattle police arrested Counter-Strike co-creator Jess Cliff, 36, early this morning for sexual exploitation of a child. Police have yet have not yet commented further on the case. The arrest record shows that Cliff, who has been an employee at Valve since 2003, was booked at 1 in the 117 a.m. Pacific time this morning. He was denied bail, according to the record. Seattle's local Cairo 7 News reports that he has not been charged with a crime. Then there was an update. This is all Jason Schreier of Kotaku. Uh, at 9.47 p.m. last night, Valve says it has suspended Cliff, telling Kotaku, quote, we are still learning details of what actually happened. Reports suggest he has been arrested for a felony offense. As such, we have suspended his employment until we know more. Motherfuckers, man. Don't be creeps. Don't be creeps. This shit. And of course, this is an accusation. Yep. But it's it's ridiculous that, you know, every day there's some story of someone doing something. Wasn't it yesterday? <laughs> or two days ago, I guess, was the Bushnell. Bushnell stuff. stuff. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. It's like, like two, this. Yeah. It's never stopping. It. It's at the end of the day, it's good news that this stuff is coming to light and sure. that it's all being reported on because I truly believe that that leads to a future where this comes up less. Sure. Where people where know people that people are learning. And it's like, hey, I can't get away with this shit. Exactly. With good reason. Yeah. So uh, we'll keep you posted if, as anything goes on there, but as I'm sure it will continue to develop. Uh, number four. Far Cry 5 has announced its DLC plans. And let me tell you, this is a game I think about. Every, I don't think about enough. And when I think about it, I'm like, I fucking can't wait for Far Cry 5. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to read from their release. Today, Ubisoft announced the content of Far Cry 5's season pass available as part of the Far Cry 5 Gold Edition or as an add-on purchase for the PlayStation 4 or Xbox or PC. Find the launch of Far Cry 5 on March 27th. The season pass will continue to deliver experiences with the unique Far Cry twist players are trans as players are transported to uncanny adventures across three unique settings. First one, Hours of Darkness. Players will travel back in time to Vietnam to battle against the Viet Cong soldiers. Dead Living Zombies. Players will face hordes of zombies across multiple B-movie scenarios. Lost on Mars. Players will leave Earth behind to go toe-to-claws with Martian arachnids. 
One of these things is not like the other. <laughs> you go to Vietnam and find the Viet Cong? Yeah, I, okay, well, that's that's probably one of them, yeah. Uh, additionally, all Far Cry 5 Season Pass owners playing on consoles receive the single-player content from another critically acclaimed Far Cry series entry with Far Cry 3 Classic Edition, which will be available to Season Pass holders four weeks prior to launching as a standalone purchase in the summer of 2018 on PS4, Xbox One. Uh, Far Cry 3 Classic Edition will let fans and newcomers uh, visit the series or revisit Rook Island uh, and encounter one of the franchise's most villainous or notorious villains, Bass. I thought it was villainous villains. I was like, wait, what? Uh, who was brought to life by Michael Mando as Jason. Bro- we all remember Far Cry 3. That's cool. That you get to play Far Cry 3 again. I want to know what you think of that DLC, though. Uh, I mean, whatever. Like, it's PC bullshit aside. Like, cool. Great. Let's go. More gameplay stuff. And it's yeah. like, really, it's horde modes and it's different things that people are doing. Cool. Fine. Yeah. Uh, but like, PC shit like what <laughs> I don't know if it's really is it I wonder if it has I haven't seen blowback I saw this get announced this morning and they went on is there been blowback about PC stuff because like blowback. the Vietnam War was a war yeah the Viet Cong was, war I, I just it's just next to aliens and zombies sure and that that'll give you especially that's, that's being the only thing dead living zombies players face hordes of zombies across multiple B movie scenarios so it's not even like it's yeah. not like going to be a, a grounded take on it. Yeah, but I mean, you know, hey, the, the shit happened and there's it's a, it's a fucking video game. Yeah. Like facing off against whatever it is, like there's an understanding that it's a game that you were playing. So like I had I personally have absolutely no issue with this. It's just funny to look at. I and they uh, right now as I'm starving for Cry, Far Cry 5, it gets me I'm like, "Oh man, I'd love to play these." But then I don't I wonder how much like you know, I love zombies, but dead living zombies players face hordes of zombies across multiple B movie scenarios. What's it actually going to be like? Am I actually going to reboot Far Cry 5 to play that? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Lost on Mars could be interesting, but who knows? Uh, Drew from Hayward writes into kindoffunny.com slash KFGD just like you can. It says, how are you doing? Greg and Tim. If this question is better suited for a games cast, apologies. I thought it was great here, so I read it. I was wondering, for single player driven games, do you prefer DLC that extends the original story, new little side stories not connected to the main game, or somewhere in the middle, like a non canon continuation such as Red Dead's Undead Nightmare? I asked because the Far Cry 5 season pass was announced and includes a few new levels in the Vietnam War, the zombies, the Mars. Unless Far Cry 5 takes a huge left turn from its American religious cult story and actually includes zombies and space travel, I have a hard time seeing the DLC being connected to the main story. I personally like side DLC, such as the such as these, because it allows the developers to make something ridiculous and not be restricted by the rules or lore they've established in the main game. Thanks. Have a good day. Tim, where do you want DLC to come down? Um, <laughs> it's kind of a cop-out answer, but I feel like it's very context sensitive. Mm. It depends on the game t- genre style how important is story in in what you're getting sure if it's an rpg if it's final fantasy 10 uh then to me it's like i would want something that is continuing the story but i'd want it to do so in in a way that uh is equally as gratifying as the main game and that's really really tough to do sure uh final fantasy 15 i think is a good example of like hey well let's flesh out the actual plot and and really delve into the characters in, in interesting ways uh but, but then there's things like prince of persia 2008 oh god the, the uh, epilogue the actual ending was dlc i hate that the, the ending of the game was dlc and it's like mm, well that's not the right way to do it but yeah. it's, it's kind of hard when a story is completed to then continue the story in a smaller thing and have that feel meaningful meaningful yeah and unless you find a way to to do that i i would just be like eh, let's advise against that for something that's a bit more outlandish like far cry yeah these are fun cool ideas to <laughs> to expand it in different ways um and i do feel like with red dead that was a great way to to handle uh, yeah th- that and that was my thing you know talking about red dead because i loved undead nightmare i thought that was a great way for red dead to handle dlc because it was once credits rolled on red dead i was like i'm done there was still stuff i hadn't done in the open world and i, I didn't go for the platinum or anything but it was like that story so poignant and the way it ends is so perfect that i was like cool i'm done with this story it would have felt weird to come back in and run through it in a way it felt weird to do it with frozen wilds for horizon Mm. i loved horizon i love frozen wilds but i would have much preferred frozen wilds to have been i would have i if i could time travel or not care or whatever i would have much preferred to have a a complete edition of that game and do frozen wilds before i finished the game Mm. because having finished the game of horizon knowing where it all ends to come back and do frozen wilds this is it does it sounds worse than it is it almost feels like a waste 
because it is I'm still getting these new weapons and I'm doing all this stuff but once I'm done here it's over like yeah. I, I've already beaten the boss I've already rolled credits I've already done the rest of the quests going yeah. through and doing this and meeting new people it, it would have been cooler to meet them in the story yeah and the, I, I feel the same way about the Zelda DLC right where you know and, and even that it's I feel like two examples that recently really let me down were Zelda and Star Wars Battlefront 2 uh, where their single player campaign and DLC it when you finish the games, there was a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. When you beat Zelda, there's a hint at a future that could exist. You don't see that in the DLC at all. Yeah. Star Wars Battlefront 2 ends without an ending. And I'm like, oh, okay, I mean, this sucks, but I guess the DLC, oh no, they just don't. No, yeah. They just totally jump over that. And it's like, it's it really feels like a, a shitty way to handle the whole thing. Yeah. And that's not to say that the DLC wasn't fun in both cases. Uh, in Battlefront, it was just more Battlefront, which whatever, that's as fun as it is. Uh, but Zelda, more Zelda. It was some of the best shrines of the game, like I've said a million times. A lot of stuff I didn't like. But uh, in terms of the story, we were kind of, if not promised something, we were kind of um, advertised sure. something. Like we sure. were kind of like led to believe that. Uh, it was implied that we were going to get either the end of a story or a better understanding of why we didn't get an end. And in both cases, I don't think we got that. And that's that sucks. It sucks to leave a bad taste in your mouth about an experience that you loved. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's when I think about, I'm trying to think of DLC that I played and loved. And I, I it's hard. You it's know hard I mean? to think about about in the sense of what he's talking about of single player story games. Yeah. Mario Kart eight to me sure. I'm like and Smash Brothers fucking love that stuff. Like yeah. the amount of care and hey, here's just more of the game that you loved and the things you loved about those games. Right. Mario Kart eight, Grand Prix. Cool. Just do that. We don't need weird ass like and now you can play a zombie mode or whatever. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah, no, yeah. we don't need the gimmicks. Just give us more of the core game. I can't speak to it with experience because I never played it, but I know people loved the Witcher DLC and the way they did that, like Blood and Wine. Yeah. People really loved that. A year later, here was this giant thing that was basically another game. Yeah. People really dug that, and I think that speaks to how those kind of giant RPGs work, right? Because I remember how much I loved the DLC for Kingdoms of Amalur Reckoning, where it was like I had this character and I had a million quests and like, hey, here's pirates and here's more. Mm. And you just got it and had it right there ready to go. But it was the same thing of me being invested at the moment, not taking seven months off and coming back to it. Yeah, it's it's DLC in a, a different sense because it's not actually downloadable content as an update to a game. But I loved Ratchet and Clank Quest for Booty when it came out. And oh. That was kind of the... Um, you know, their their foray into a smaller downloadable smaller download. downloadable games. It was like I think it was fifteen dollars for just a smaller like two hour long experience of Ratchet yeah. and Clank, and I liked that where it was a spin off and it did have a different like a pirates theme and and uh, it was different, but it was still what made Ratchet and Clank fun. But it didn't have to do with the overall story that they were building. Maybe yeah. a little bit here and there. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, I enjoyed that a lot, but that's because Ratchet and Clank isn't really a story based game. Yeah. It, there's a story, but who the fuck cares? You know who did it? Per I'm, I'm thinking of Left Behind. Last of Us. Yeah. Last of Us Left yeah, Behind yeah, yeah. was great because it was like, hey, here's this character you love from this mm -hmm. game, but didn't really play as. Let's give you her. Let's tell you, give her, let's give you a story that gives you more context to what happened in the game you already loved and played let's and have the Star experience Wars be Rogue different. Star Wars this. Uh, it'll make the thing you love even better. Yeah, exactly. Based on exactly. more context and more fleshing out of characters. Yeah. That's the one. Love That's it. the one. There you go. Uh, Tim. Mm -hmm. I can't wait for Far Cry 5. Maybe sure these can. DLCs. I can't tell. I don't know. Uh, but the problem is Far Cry 5 is still so far away. It's a big problem. If I want to know what came to the digital mom and grop shops today, where would I go? The official list of upcoming software across each and every platform is listed by the Kind of Funny Games Daily Show host each and every weekday. Yeah. Why isn't Kevin running the show? He just likes to keep cool Greg fresh. Is that the deal? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He's just in there probably playing Switch. No, I'm sorry. Disney emoji. Yeah, that's him. All right. We hate him. We love you, Kevin. Uh, out today. We were here too on PC. Mad Carnage on Switch, not Maximum Carnage. That'd be too hot. Uh, that'd be too hot. We can handle it. Past Cure on Xbox One, PS4, and PC. EA Sports UFC 3 on Xbox One and PS4. I didn't even know that game was coming out. No, that's interesting. Weird. Nightmares from the Deep 3, Davy Jones, Xbox One, and PlayStation 4. New dates for you. Yakuza 6, The Song of Life, has been delayed till April 17th. However, there's a demo coming February 27th. Rage and Justice comes to PC, PS4, Xbox, Switch in 2018 sometime. And then Trail Makers is coming. Yeah. I don't, I'm afraid of being yep. Trial Makers. You know what I mean? It's Trail Makers. Coming to Xbox Early Access soon. 
That's a console launch exclusive. I read an Xbox Day. They didn't have a date, but I wanted to put it out there. I have a question for you, Greg. Lay it on me. What do you got for me? Uh, I missed, I wasn't on the show yesterday. Sure. Yesterday being Thursday. Of course. Thursday being the day that the eShop. A giant, the Switch yes, a million Nintendo. Was yesterday a disaster? Oh, there was a million games, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 Why? You're not, you're not a fan of that? Yeah, not a fan of it. They're clogging it up? No, no, no. Putting Last Thursday, I, I had a big rant about it. Oh, really? I missed yeah. it. Sorry. No, it's not. Not happy with it. I mean, it, it's going to keep happening. It is. We're not going to stop. Is. How many more games can we have on the Nintendo Switch eShop that are blocking great experiences like the soon to be Owlboy and Celeste and all these great, and Night in the Woods and all this stuff uh, that are just single word names based on things you know and love, like tennis or chess or golf? It's like I have stop, tennis. Guys. I got tennis. Yeah, and how do you feel about tennis? I haven't played You're it yet. You're part of the problem, Greg. You're hey, part man, of the problem. I like tennis and it looks like hot shots yeah. tennis. Yeah, you like tennis. You saw it, it says tennis. You're like, oh, I'm going to buy a game. And you buy it and don't even play it. You're incentivizing bad behavior. I mean, you know what? Welcome to a conversation that was on PSI Love You XOXO last year. All right, I know. there's too much stuff. Happening. I know. I and know. Steam had but the problem. But now too. I care. Now I care a lot, Greg. <laughs> now it's affecting me. Now it's a real problem. Deals of the day for you. Xbox Live Gold has a free play weekend featuring Naruto Shippuden Ultimate Ninja Storm Four. I just powered through it. Thank you for that. I got Naruto fun. Shippudeno Shubaden. Ship you den. I've never been able to say ultimate ninja storm Four, starting at 9 a.m. Thursday. So right now it's already going and it runs until uh, 1159 p.m. Pacific time Sunday, February 4th. Xbox live gold members can play the game for free. Oh, free. <laughs> I'm dying. Mm. Yeah, I've had this ever since I came back to Canada. I had this cough mm -hmm. and I feel like it's on the ropes now, but it's doing that thing now where it's like, okay, cool. We're just going to give you the final thing up here where you can't breathe. That's I got my br my breathing's all off. I don't know, dude. Maybe it's just a thing. Maybe there's like some weird like zombie apocalypse or something happening. Like it's in the air. Pheromones and all that stuff. Sure. Pheromones. Uh, because, yeah, I, I got I was really sick like a week ago and I just it lasted for a little bit. Yeah. And I've had a cough for a week. I haven't been sick for a week. I don't feel sick. Yeah. But there's just congestion yeah. and cough. It's, top, it's one of those annoying like <laughs> yeah, coughs I hate that, too. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, come on, man. On top of that, I'm hungover. Oh, really? And it was night two of Pertilla having diarrhea and waking me up every two hours. Mm. All day long, he's home with Jen, mm. the one he loves the most now. Mm. Dog doesn't shit once. What's your sleep hungover? I go to bed. He fucking wakes me up. What? Your sleep hungover? Oh, no, I drank a ton oh, last okay, night, too. Okay, no, no, okay. it's a combination. That was effect. a weird, uh, yeah, I'm hungover. I'm just letting you know, shitting. I got stuff here, I got a headache, and mm. I got a dog at home pooping his pants all the time. Reader mail, though. But before we jump into it, I want to say it's brought to you by Me Undies and Pro Flowers. You want to look good with your significant I other do. this Valentine's Day, right, Tim? Mm hmm. Then check out Me Undies Matching Pairs, a unique, fun gift for you and your Valentine. They're the perfect balance of comfortable fit and exciting prints. Don't spend another Valentine's Day giving the same old gift. Check out MeUndies.com and find the best match for your match. Mm -hmm. I love Me Undies. Me fucking too. We're wearing them right now. Yes, we, we had to pay are. full price. You don't have to. I'm you on my last pair right now. I gotta do the laundry. Okay, yeah, weekend. you just do some laundry. It's, no, yeah, it's not like I'm not throwing them <laughs> to the fire after. No, they're too valuable One, to me. They're too, they last forever hey, too. I'm gonna say though, Greg. If I was going to launch them into, yeah. into the world, yeah. they'd have some real good launch. I know it's not in the copy here, talk because usually the mattress is the nice spring, nice bounce. Me undies, the spandex on these. Oh, yeah. Woo. Again, woo -woo, through the, roof. the reason I, I sunsetted all my underwear except the me undies is that the me undies have been around forever and are still great. So I just bought more and they're even mm -hmm. greater because they're so soft. Anyway, I'll get, so. we love me undies. You'd love them too. This Valentine's Day, go to meundies.com slash games. Get your partner a gift that's for the both of you. Order by February 5th, that's Monday, at 10 a.m. for free standard shipping so your gift arrives on time. 100% satisfaction guaranteed. Right now, MeUndies has an exclusive Valentine's Day offer just for you, the listener. Any first-time purchasers, when you go there and you buy the MeUndies matching pairs, you get 20% off and free shipping. Get 20% off matching undies for you and your significant other with a 100% satisfaction guarantee at MeUndies.com slash games. This will be the best Valentine's Day gift that you will give. Start matching your bottom half to your better half. Go to MeUndies.com slash games right now. And again, like I told you before, life hack, if you don't have a significant other, just go there, get the matching pairs for yourself. Double your undies. It's easy. They keep saying significant other. So it, it, I'm sure they're, they're totally pro gay, gay marriage and gay rights and all this stuff. So you could two probably go one. there and just get two sets of men, two sets of women. You find, yeah. but or, it's just for you. I mean, if, I wouldn't recommend doing that if, if you were me, because in an ideal world, I don't want matching two pairs of the same undies. You get what I'm saying? We're not wearing them at the same time. I know, but it's like I like the fun of every day having. I, is it army men today? I don't know. Is it mm. is it starships? Yeah, maybe polka dots. Who knows? What am I wearing today? 
I got Army oh, Man. I'm Tiger Print. And I went, I went, I went straight Savage. in into the zip. Oh, you, oh wow! You just yeah. ripped open the zipper. That's how you did it. All right. Well, time to tell you about the other sponsor of Kind of Funny Games Daily today. It's Pro Flowers and Sherry's Berries. They've teamed up to help you really impress your Valentine this year with their perfectly paired collection. Go ahead and think inside the box this Valentine's Day. This really is a one of a kind gift. Your flowers and dipped strawberries will arrive together in a beautiful, specially designed box that keeps your fl- flowers fresh and your berries cold, guaranteed. Right now, my listeners can save twenty percent on any one of their perfectly paired combinations or any other gift over $29 with the promo code KF. These are in the office. Mm-hmm. I had them for breakfast today. Sherry breakfast. berries, delicious. Yeah. yeah. Breakfast, breakfast berries, berries. Why, why not? not? <laughs> the flowers, they impress uh, everyone that takes them. Now, here's the thing with the flowers. True story that I, if I'm being honest, I don't understand. Flowers, I love flowers. Who does? I guess. <laughs> Let me take that back. I, I don't love flowers. I don't really care about flowers. But I mean, you know, I understand they're a thing. And I understand that they're a romantic gesture. Uh-huh. And I understand that that's been a thing for, pretty. for decades, right? They smell. Eons. Since flowers were existed. Yeah. Um, there's something about these flowers. Every time I bring the pro flowers home to Gia, her face lights up. She is stoked beyond belief. Yeah. So happy that Jen she loves flowers. Jen loves flowers, yeah. And I'm like, it's just weird. I think maybe it the just first, means I thought the first time I get it. The second time, sure. But it's been like 10 times now. It means that you've gone out into the world and in your daily life, you were thinking about them. True. That's all it is. It's just, yeah, it's just, it. that's why you got to do it, ladies and gentlemen. But Pro Flowers, man, it's like, it, it'll work every time. <laughs> sure. Uh, and that's the thing. Valentine's Day is coming up and somebody's birthday is coming up and somebody's holiday is coming up. So just, you can use this right now. Just do Today's it. Today's Groundhog Day. You get to pick the delivery date. They'll do it there. There's only one way to get 20% off a perfectly paired gift over $29 featuring beautiful blooms. Go to Pro Flowers and... F- Oh, sorry. Get the pro flowers and the strawberries. Go to proflowers.com today. Enter the code KF at checkout. That's proflowers.com slash co- or no code KF at checkout. I, true story though, Greg. I'm blown away. Seeing yep. her, I was like, how are you still this happy about him? But she pro loves flowers, flowers. Man, it gets the job done. It does. Sherry's berries. I can, I can vouch for that. Well, yeah, we just eat those. <laughs> We're just eating those things. Those are good. Yeah, they're real good. I wanted to look here. All right. yeah, get some good reader wanna, mail. Yeah, you, well, I ha- you did it. You helped me out. You yeah. threw some in here. So I'm just seeing where I want to start. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Let's just start with Mark Lopez, who wrote in the kindoffunny.com slash KFGD and says, Hey, Greg and Tim. So I was scrolling through the Nintendo Switch subreddit, and I found something that I wanted to ask you guys. Reddit user Tenogad asked, Should Nintendo partner with Discord? In his opinion piece, Tenograd, Nintendo Gad, sorry, stated that Nintendo has proved to everyone that they are not passionate about online services. They've realized this and partnered with other companies in different markets, i.e. DNA, Illumination. So why not Discord? A Discord partnership could be a big win for Nintendo, especially since they are years behind on progression. They could team up on the mobile or even build software for the system OS. I would love to hear your opinions on this. Thanks for everything you do. Mark Lopez. Um... Very interesting. Discord be, on the up and up. Yeah. Um, and I feel like that could be a, a really cool move to move Discord into the, the quote unquote mainstream. Mm-hmm. Uh, have people understand Discord in the way people now understand YouTube and are starting to understand Twitch. Sure. Um, so that, that could be cool. And yeah, man, anything Nintendo can do to help uh, make their service better. Good. Good. Serviceable. Decent. Uh, a service. <laughs> yeah, like a service, uh, I think is very important. And Discord yeah. knows how to do that stuff. Discord's great with all that and is, is kind of synonymous in the gaming online community uh, to people that, that know what it is. Yeah. Right. So that could be really cool. Uh, I don't think it's likely and I don't think Nintendo thinks that way. Uh, Illumination and DNA, I think, are very different scenarios there. Yeah. Uh, DNA is is them looking at like people that are making mobile games in ways that they would want to line up with and them just kind of realizing, hey, we have the IP, we have the properties. But we are focusing on the switch. We want you to, to kind of do this on the side. And Illumination, totally different scenario. Yeah. Where it's like, let's make money. It's a movie studio. Let's yeah. make money. The yeah. Discord thing is awesome. It's a great idea. It would be really cool. But it's just, I hate to do this and say this. It sounds too progressive in the way Nintendo's not progressive. That's not what Nintendo does, yeah. right? And I think it would be awesome. I think, you know, gamers like us and people watching this or listening to this, they know Discord. And I think it would be interesting to see a major company really team up with discord in this way of like, all right, cool. We're not great at it. You handle it, but that's just not Nintendo how Nintendo Online ever thinks. Powered by discord. Yeah. yeah, like yeah, that. yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. It, it's too good to be true. Yeah. It's exactly. really what it comes down to. Like that's, mm, yeah, I just don't see it. I don't see it working out uh, in, in real life, but it, 
it would be awesome if in it some yeah some parallel universe right that's a great idea and nintendo would jump at it and snap at it and definitely yeah. have it and i would definitely put it into the system os because then yeah you just have your party chat and everything else the way you want it so to will Okay, you want to, yeah, to continue continue this little Nintendo online train. Will from Missouri says, "Would Nintendo yeah, well, officially?" Yeah, that's, that's how that's how you spell Missouri, huh? Dude, I just fucking you just slam slam on that keyboard. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, Will from Missouri says, "Would Nintendo officially charging for an online service? Will they improve their online infrastructure, or will it remain the subpar thing it is?" And then there was another question from Hawkman08. Hawkman, since Tim was not available on yesterday's episode, what's your opinion on Nintendo's online <laughs> service announcement? <laughs> what will be the big game, quote unquote, to go along with it? Will virtual console release alongside it so we're rolling all these that's into, a lot of stuff in, happening in, yeah, yeah. into kind of one thing <sighs> nintendo announcing that its online service is coming in september obviously came from their investor call and their need to kind of put a couple things out there for t- investors to feel at ease same thing of why was mario kart tour announced yeah hey dna still doing stuff look at that their switch speaks for itself the software speaks for itself their answers are there announcing the movie hey here's more things to be excited about cool um, I don't think that by choice they would have announced the online service coming in September this soon. Uh, I feel like they would have saved that for a direct with some type of deeper announcement, like right. more details and more uh, a game to go alongside it. Um, I've been reading a lot about this on the Nintendo Switch subreddit and just thinking about it a lot because it's what I do. And uh, I, I, I'm not convinced that they're going to launch in September with you know multiple big online games to like push this. It's Nintendo. Really? Like, yeah. Or is, is this again, we're, we're thinking of it too much of how uh, we would do it or certain companies would do it not, yeah. and not thinking about how Nintendo you would know, do it. I was reading, I think it was on, on the subreddit <laughs> of someone saying like, you know, the last time uh, a console launched and then the paid lo- online came months later or years later, whatever was the original Xbox. And like, it's been so many years since then. Yeah. So to kind of like a Nintendo being where they're at now, I don't know. Nintendo has acted differently in the last year and a half than it ever has before. They are taking things seriously that they didn't before, but they're still Nintendo. They're still behind the curve when it comes to standards. Yeah. Um, but they they know that they now have this major success with the Switch, and they're going to want to keep that going. So it's it would behoove them to definitely have an online infrastructure that, that people aren't constantly bitching and complaining about you know brian altano saves getting deleted yesterday what the fuck man you know um, what I mean? if you if you didn't see about this do you get top on the show no no okay uh altano said brian in, altano isn't news to me well, right, I mean, so. he sent in his uh his switch to nintendo to because there was a problem with it and when it got sent back all of his saves were deleted they said they sent an email being like hey we're gonna you know have to replace it and so all your saves are gonna be wiped yeah yeah and that's not standard for them like usually like when it's replaced the, the saves are there but there was something got corrupted yeah. and all of the saves are gone because you can't transfer them to SD Anywhere. cards, you can't have cloud saves, any of that. And it's just like, it's these like little things that are actually really big things yeah. that come on, Nintendo. Like, how do you not have this figured out? Will that stuff come with this online update? I believe it will. And yeah. like, maybe I'm being optimistic, but I do think that Nintendo's going to use the online service as a, a big firmware update to kind of get things back or get not back, get things to where they should be, uh, where Nintendo has never been there before. Will there be a big game launching alongside it? Come on, there's got to be, right? So here's the thing. Mi- Smash Bros. is such a joke at this point of like, there's a port coming, there's not a port coming, there's a port coming, there's not a port coming. Uh, at this point, I'm convinced there's a port coming. Okay. And and will that change by next month? Maybe. But I truly believe that if a port of Smash Brothers is happening, it will be in September to launch alongside the, the, system, the, or the, the, online. the online infrastructure. And if that's the case... We're going to need to hear about it in the next month. Yeah. Smash isn't a, th- a game that they are they're like, oh, hey, here it is. It's like, no, that game comes out. And if there's new characters, if there's new maps, if there's new anything, there's going to be teases. There's going to be drops. But what if there's, there's not? There what if it be. is just, it's like Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, where it is, oh, I guess they did include new characters. My apologies. I'll yeah, that back. All right. Yeah. King Boo. But, but again, Dry bones. But again, this goes back to what I was talking about earlier, but when we were talking about DLC, Mario Kart 8 had amazing DLC packs. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe didn't add anything a value that people actually want from Mario Kart. There wasn't more Grand Prix. There wasn't more tracks. Yeah. More characters, whatever. Yeah. Right. And they, they changed the gameplay of having two items and stuff sure. like that, which that's a significant change, but uh, it's not giving people more of what they want for smash brothers. It would be new characters and it would be all the content, all the maps from the three DS version and Wii U together, maybe a single player game. Like I'm, I want to re-release. You think they put in a single player game? 
I want Smash more than anything, more than anyone, right? I don't give a fuck what form it's in. I'll take it and I'm gonna be happy with it. The more reasons to never have my Wii U pulled out again, I'm fine with. I wanna switch over to the Switch entirely, great. Uh, having said that, I hope that this isn't just a Smash 4 port from Wii U. I hope it's more of a Splatoon 2 situation. Okay. And in that case, do I see a single player campaign? Sure. Do I see that happening by September? See, that's the thing is I feel like you're just dreaming too big. Yeah. I feel like it's going to be, hey, we're putting out Smash 4. It's all the content you know and love. There's a few fixes. I don't there. I guess there's a new character. There's a new map. And I think if they did it like that, then yeah, it would make sense that there isn't all this fanfare. It is an announcement in, I still think in the coming weeks, maybe the next two, month, two yeah. months, you know what I mean? Of like, they do a direct about it and this is what's happening. It's coming in September alongside the online. I think that's just what they need. And in, in that I, I don't know who in September is going to be playing, still playing so much Mario Kart and so much Splatoon, and so, where they're like, "Well, I gotta fucking buy this thing. I gotta get this online pass." Now, right now. okay, jumping off of that, my predictions. I don't think it's gonna be this like you need to get this to play these games because <laughs> even Smash Brothers, it's like that game already exists. Mario Kart, Splatoon, like these games. At that point, people have been playing online for free for a year. Yeah, it's gonna be virtual console. Okay, it's going to be their Netflix style subscription service. Hopefully. Hopefully, but I think that's what people are going to be like. Oh, that's why I'm paying for this. So you, it's not going to be to play the games. You online. see it being more of a PlayStation Plus, yep. more of an Xbox Live. Go, oh, eh. Xbox Live with the think of PlayStation Plus. I'm I'm skewed on because I think of PlayStation Plus as what it was before they added an online mm -hmm. play. So think of like PS3 era of free games and discounts and bonuses. That's yeah. what you're saying for this more than it being. Hey, this is your ticket to be able to play online. In my heart of hearts. I truly believe that Nintendo will never be in a place where their online service is worth paying for just to play games online. Sure. There will never be enough games to support that. It makes sense on PlayStation and Xbox because of third party sure. games, support because me. of Call of Duty, because of, you know, uh, Division, because of Destiny. Nintendo's never going to have that. If retro comes out and the game they've been working on is some massively multiplayer online experience, some game as a service or whatever, I could be totally wrong that that's a Nintendo that I don't know. Um, but looking at this, I think the Nintendo online service is going to give a lot of people things that they've been asking for for a long time. Um, and really to silence the complainers. I think there's a lot of people that like to bitch and complain of like, well, why isn't this here? But it really doesn't affect them. Sure. Um, and it's the same people that are saying there's too many ports are the same people that are saying, where's a virtual console? Sure. And it's like, there needs to be some type of middle ground there of like, your argument doesn't hold. Um, but I do think that this will be the virtual console replacement. I do think that there will be downloadable themes. That I do think that it will give us cloud save. I do think that it's going to be a lot of the stuff that we all want. Interesting. Because um, that does, for me personally, change the argument of it has to launch with a big game. Then, yeah, if, if the big game, quote unquote, is actually, wow, that's awesome. Uh, <laughs> the big service, right? Then I would, then, yeah, it's a different ball of wax there. I understand what you're saying. Yeah, and, and that's just being realistic about Nintendo's output and what the switch could ever end up being like yeah third parties are supporting it more than I anyone really expected but not for like multiplayer games not sure. for online things and that that could all change but I don't see it changing right yeah I was talking to somebody yesterday games cast pre or post show maybe when they were asking or no was it Nick talking on the games cast about Monster Hunter and like switch possibilities? Mm. It's just like, no, no, no. Just, I mean, that'd be awesome, not. but no, that they'd have to make a different version of this game to make it happen. You're an interesting man. You know a lot about Nintendo, but you know what? Bebop Fox doesn't like you one Bebop fucking Fox, bit. Bebop Fox, why not? Bebop Fox writes into kindoffunny.com slash KFGD and says, Tim Gettys, uh -oh. I have a bone to pick with you. Great. So I recently caught up on your Gamescast episodes and I was listening to you guys talk with Andre Seegers about your 2018 Nintendo predictions. I was sure that you guys would talk about Star Fox somewhere along the line, but you guys seem to brush it off. Tim even read my comment about wanting a new good Star Fox game, and I believe Andre's words were, quote, prepare for disappointment, my friend. <laughs> this baffled me. I understand it's been a while since we had a good Star Fox game, but that shouldn't mean it's impossible to turn things around, right? Mm. Personally, I would love a spiritual successor to Star Fox Assault. I know some people did not like the controls and some repetitive levels, but I loved that they had a mix of ground and our wing missions and I thought the story was the best out of the Star Fox games. If they fix the controls and tell a really cool story, they could easily make a new game that would knock it out of the park. This seems so obvious to me 
but you guys were very quick to dismiss the possibility of a new good addition to the franchise. My question is this. What makes it so improbable that we can that we can get a new good Star Fox game? And what do you think needs to be done for Star Fox to make a comeback? Thank you for everything you do. Alec, a.k.a. Bebop Fox. You make a lot of solid points there, Mr. Bebop Fox. Um, and Does I will he? say I join you in that Star Fox Assault is underrated and the best story in the Star Fox franchise. Um, I do not agree with you in that the on foot missions are good and any of that because it wasn't. <laughs> the R-Wing stuff was great and that game gave me a lot of what I love about Star Fox, which is the er- fun aerial set piece moments and interesting, fun, quirky characters and c- good writing and dialogue and corny B movie plot and moments, right? Yeah. Um, the reason that I'm so down on Star Fox as one of my favorite franchises, you've been burned ever. Yeah, ever. I fucking love Star Fox. Uh, I've been burned and you see a pattern with with that franchise where they have remade the original Star Fox multiple times. Star Fox on the SNES happens, right? And it's a hit for a lot of reasons. Very cool. Graphically, it's different than everything. Uh, nigh unplayable now, I would say. Um, then you move Not on to Star Fox 64 <coughs> remake of the Super Nintendo game. Yeah. Majority of people's favorite entry in the series for good reason. It's fantastic. Uh, then you get the actual remake of that on 3DS. So direct remake of Super Mario, or not Super Mario, Star Fox 64. Then you get Star Fox Zero recently, which was yet another retreading of the exact same story beats. Hey, man. It with, works for Zelda. With a lot. No, but it's it's not that. It's It's actual, like... Exact same lines. It's it's the, it's the same the same story. It's the same same thing. It's not like oh in a different land or oh in a different like. I don't it, have a fairy. I don't yeah, have a grandma. It's, it's just it's weird that they just keep going to back thing, making it worse every time. And that's not true. That's not fair to say uh, at all. It's but funny though. It's Star a funny Fox thing Zero. to say. Star Fox Zero is they made it worse. Um, and it just sucks that the Wii U and Nintendo's first party output used Star Fox as the the punching bag at the end of its life cycle as it's one last big shot and here's your one reason to actually use the the gamepad nobody wanted that yeah um and they they it was an insult to to star fox fans to the people that would support this franchise and i think that when you look at it and with all the the reboots and with all this stuff um i've often said that star fox is similar to the star wars of video games uh in the sense of the characters and the worlds that they have and how interesting it all could be <coughs> um and it was based off star wars like there was a lot of similarities and the reason they did all of that is because they didn't have that type of characters uh to play with in the nintendo ip legacy right yeah, and you're yeah, looking yeah. across all of it and star fox zero is the star wars prequels and until you get george okay. lucas out and sell it to disney and yeah. have something to make me believe in it why would i and the worst thing about it is what does that even look like could Platinum Games come in and fix it? Nope. Platinum Games part of the problem. Oh, no. Like, we need some partnership to come in that is going to look at Star Star Fox and be like, we're going to do this. What could make this good? If fucking Rare came out and was like, we're doing Star Fox. I believe they'd do that right. Yeah. That's not what's going to happen. And I think that's the problem is we're too close to Star Fox Zero. I believe the Star Fox will be back, and I believe that the next game will be good. Be good. It's, we're years away from that even being a possibility. It feels like so. I mean, like, and this, I'm not a Star Fox fan. I don't have, I, I, and I don't hate it or anything. I just don't have the history and knowledge. It feels like a game that would do really well if you just copied Ratchet and Clank, no? And not exactly like that, but I mean, like, Ratchet, you know, has, it looks like a Pixar cartoon, which is what you want Fox to look like. Mm-hmm. The story's good and it's funny. Uh, there's ground combat, there's air combat, like in, in the later, latter games, right? Like, I feel like that would be the way to go about it and like reboot it and re give it energy, right? And get people excited for it or no? Am I just off base? I mean, what do you want out of a Star Fox game? Here's the problem. Star Fox, what we want, and I'm using the Wii as the general internet commenter of sure, what, sure, sure. what they talk about Star Fox is what they want is something, what we want is something that really doesn't have a place in the world now. What we want is an eShop title. What we want is an on rails uh, okay. flight shooter that's yeah. it that's it like that's what we want from star wars we don't want all or from star fox we don't want all range mode for everything we don't want to on foot missions we don't want it's like <laughs> no no no. we want a tight story that that goes through and is fun and it's like an arcade time attack score wow attack okay then i'm way off on what my, thing. My, yeah. I, I would if i was there or if i if somebody's like what do you want to do with star fox i would totally 
not as somebody who doesn't know shit about it, but like knows that like it's basically Star Wars. I would make it like yeah, uh, third person, you know, running around, not on rails. I'm doing it like Ratchet and Clank. We're exploring having a mm -hmm. space opera there. Yeah, but and I, I mean, be, if, if they nailed that, that'd be great. But they tried that with Assault, and it didn't work. Gotcha. Because like at the end of the day. You don't want to take people away from why they're playing the game. Yeah. If we're playing Star Fox to fly around and in, in, in your R wing, don't make me get out of the R wing. You know. Good point. I, and I think that's been the the biggest issue. Okay. With the series, as it has progressed, but I don't know. I hope it comes back, and I hope that it's good. But I think it's going to be a while. Okay. I'm going to ask you something I've never done on this show. I'm going to ask Tim Gettys mm -hmm. to take a seat on the bench. Okay. I'm going to ask Big Kev Dog Coella to take off. His jacket, his warm up jacket, come out here, play some ball with me for How a second. How long is this going to be? Just one question. Am I done for the, the no, show? I no, want, okay. well, I got one more after that. I mean, Kevin can stay in the wings. I can finish you off if you want. Yeah, let, let's say bye to me. Well, and then he, Kevin, but then, Kevin, someone, but someone then Kevin's got to do your wrong. Oh, you got to call. Just, yeah, someone just call me. And I, if I could take that call, that'd be interesting. All right, do you want to, you just want to go then? Yeah. Or, okay, just that. go. Then go. Okay. You're dismissed. I love you guys. Bye. Bye. Have a good weekend, Tim. Big Kevin Dog Coelho. He's here. He's shaking it off. One member of the Bash Brothers when it comes to Monster Hunter. <laughs> That's what it's all about. Yes, Greg, the rumors are true. Super one more jump. Can I talk about it? Uh, let's check the embargo on super one more jump that we have there. I think you can. Let's yeah. Double, uh, I have think, you oh, played oh, it? Oh, no, have I haven't played, played it yet. It? I haven't played it yet. Interesting. Hold on. Hold on. Let me. Fascinating. I'm in the wrong email. Yeah, I'm in the wrong oh, email. For Greg, take your time. Fill, I'll just sit here just filling fill air, counting time. 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. 29. You're doing it. You're doing 30, it. 31, more 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48. You know I mean? I, well, then never mind about this game. But um, I know. Here we go. 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 Give them the elevator pitch. What is this game? Uh, so you're a floating head on a platform with rails on it. Okay. And you press one button and it gets you going. Yeah. You want to try it? Yeah. Hold on. Don't do this level because it's incredibly hard. Okay. Mm. So is it like an endless runner? Um, I don't know what that term means. Okay. <laughs> 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 All right. Fair. 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 All right. Hold on. This classic mode here. You're. Oh, see that even that seems like too complicated for you. So you uh -huh. hit a button, it goes, and then I just hit the same button to yeah, jump, and it jumps. Oh, I see what it and is. And you just want to get to the Ooh. end. There's oh, three yeah, yeah. little diamonds like that you need that you like can this. collect. You don't have to, but oh boy, is it just fun? So you're on. There's like you know, this is how levels always are, where it's mm -hmm. like there's a ma there's metal rails all over. Mm -hmm. You're this guy. You get going, and you've got to jump to the next magnet yes. and not blow yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. great. Yeah. There's different modes on each level, uh -huh. and I haven't fucked around too much with the different modes, but it like it has a mirror mode, and it's crazy how much it changes those levels. Yeah, yeah. So I'll I'll do a, like the whole like section one or whatever it's called, uh, and then go into the mirror mode, and man, it's so tough and like I don't. Know, it's really fun. Having a lot of fun with it. I didn't expect that. That's yeah. not what I was expecting when yeah. you came on. Coming out of nowhere. Instead, I wanted to toss it to Matthew Evans, who wrote into kindoffunny.com slash KFGD and says, do you need friends to enjoy Monster Hunter to its full potential? It's interesting. It's a fascinating. Uh, How do, where do you come down on it? It first. makes it a lot better. Yeah. Because it's, uh, it's, to me, it's the kind of game where you're bashing your skull against the controller, just being like, fucking, why are these monsters so strong? And it helps to have someone there with you to be yeah. like, yeah, man, they're real strong. And I feel like it makes it easier to fight, especially like the bigger monsters. Sure. Somebody else draws um, aggro, you move yeah. around, you get a chance mm -hmm. to breathe a little yep, bit more. Yep, yep, yep. I would, I wouldn't say friends. Or I definitely think playing with friends like mm -hmm. we do is yeah. the way to play it. It's way better. But I definitely think playing with other people is the way to play it. I think mm -hmm. it's very. It's a lot like uh, to an, a more you know popular analog at the moment or whatever is Destiny. You can play Destiny alone. You can play the Division alone. But to get the most out of it, to really experience end game content, mm -hmm. you need to play with other people. So I would say even if it's not your friends, you're going to need to post quests and have people join on you. And I feel like stuff. friends would make it so much better. Friends though, make it yeah. better because now just we're, it's, we're bullshitting around about other stuff. We're not yeah. just talking about the monster. But, again. I mean, even 
like going back a little, you lose, you only have a certain amount of lives. So yeah, if yeah. you like are with the stranger and he's fucking dying, that's right. going to be really upsetting. Yeah. At least with a friend, it's like, well, you know, you understand why he's dying. Maybe he's not, you know, super experienced. Sure. Yeah. I say, yeah, I think friends would help. Yeah. And you can find your friends. How do you find them? We well, can squad up each and every episode of kind of funny games daily. We have one of you write into kind of funny.com slash KFGD and tell me your username, the platform of choice, why you need help in a video game. I read it here. The best friends come and find you today. Corey D needs help on PlayStation four. Corey D's PSN name is Rokon one zero eight. A rock on one zero eight. Rock on. R O K O N one zero eight. It's in the description of this video. Don't worry about it. You can grab it there or the podcast as well. Hey, Tim and Greg. With a lot of players leaving Destiny 2 for other games, there's still a considerable amount of us best friends playing together consistently. And with the new update that came out this week, we want to get as many best friends in our little party as possible. We're kind of small right now, so hopefully if enough people join us, we can start forming raid parties without having to go online to find randos. Those people can be real nasty sometimes. Our clan name is kind of funny best friends and Oh, I see. Kind of funny. Best friends. Kind of funny is one word there. And best friends can DM me on PSN so I can sauce them an invite to the clan and our Discord server. As always, keep up the good work and keep respecting that chicken. Corey D. Mm-hmm. Again, hit up Corey D. Rock on 108. It is in the descriptions and everything else. Kevin, I don't know how this works. When people watch the show, we ask them to go to kind of funny.com slash you're wrong and tell us what we screw up as we screw it up. This is the live people on Twitch. So we can set the record straight for everybody watching later on youtube.com slash kind of funny games and listening on podcast services around the globe. Uh, I'm going to say it first time on games daily. I don't think I've gotten anything wrong. I so far we're, we'll, we'll get there. We'll see. All right. Uh, oof, this is one where I got to prove it. Prove it to people. No, nope. uh, tries key 13 says Greg. I'm saving you on this one from all the nerds. It's pronounced ship Puden <laughs> nerds, man. And hey, Tim pheromones aren't how diseases are spread. I think Tim knew he's a good What's ship ship. What was that? Naruto. The? Oh, Naruto. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Great show. Uh, Spasm Gasm says this is a silly correction. Please disregard. Oh, okay. Well, then we're going to well, no, read it. Lita. I want to see how silly it is early in the episode. Tim said he was wearing all black. However, his underwear are in fact army men themed. Did he pull them out? Yeah. Fuck. He went through the zipper hole because we're all wearing me undies. The zipper hole. Yeah. yeah. I don't know what that means. Like he opened just the zipper hole. Yeah, to look That's at it. Really that graphic. Was weird, I thought, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, also, think of him opening his urethra. That's graphic too. Oh. Just wanted to put that in your image in your mind. Right? You know, right? Put cool spoons guy? in there. Spoons? That's a thing. I don't want to stop. Yeah. Stop. 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 King of the North <laughs> wrote into kind of funny dot com slash you're wrong. It says after hearing this ending dot 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 let Kevin host. And that was it. That was it. Yeah, that's fucking that's, nailed it. You see I'm, that? I'm, I'm refreshing. Just no to make mistakes. Sure. You killed it. I think I refreshed. Oh yeah, hold on. One Overall, not bad. Seems no, like the only all. correction was uh, pronunciation. And uh, then Tim's Lunar eighty three you know. says Tim said that Rare would make a great Star Fox game, but they made Star Fox Adventures for the GameCube. I just think he means now, maybe, but I don't know. Oh, is that not a great game? I don't know who the hell plays Star Fox. Is that Fox? the one that uh, you walk around for a lot of it? Dude, we play Monster Hunter. All right, we play big boy games, not little games where I'm a little Star Fox. All right, Monster Hunter's so hard. I, I will love that game so much. I can't wait to play more with you, ladies and gentlemen. That's been kind of funny games daily. We'll be back on Monday. Tim will be the host. I'll be the host. We'll be there for you. Uh, remember, you can watch the show live on twitch.tv slash kind of funny games as we record it. You can watch it later on youtube.com slash kind of funny games and you can listen on podcast services around the globe no matter where you consume the show. Thank you so much for doing so. We love and appreciate each and every one of you. If you think we're doing a good job, please head over to patreon.com slash kind of funny games. Kick us a buck or two. Every bit helps keep Andy here another nanosecond longer and feed his Gundam addiction. Until next time. That's Big Dog Kevin Coelho. I'm Greg Miller. It's been our pleasure. To if you, you think we're doing a bad job, keep it to yourself. Keep it to yourself. Give us more money to hire more talented mm-hmm. people. Mm-hmm.